What we wanted to understand was how the brain forms distinct memories. For instance, most people know how certain smells can evoke very powerful memories. Uh, for example, the smell of a freshly baked apple pie can evoke memories of a happy childhood, or the smell of disinfectant can remind you of the doctor's office. What we wanted to know was how the brain forms these different associations with all the millions of possible stimuli in the world, and how it forms different memories for even very similar stimuli. So there's been a hypothesis for many years based on mathematical models of memory that the best way to get this kind of stimulus-specific associative memory is through what we call sparse coding. So sparse coding is where um, out of a large population of neurons that all respond to a certain kind of stimulus, say odors, uh, only very few of them will respond to any given odor. And likewise, each neuron only responds to a few odors out of the whole universe of possible odors. Well, to address this question, we turn to the fruit fly uh, because it has a pretty simple brain, but we, can, we have a lot of powerful genetic tools that we can use to manipulate specific neurons in the brain. So fruit flies can learn to associate a particular odor with a negative outcome. We tested the flies behaviorally uh, in a custom-built apparatus in which flies walk up and down in these little chambers, kind of like a fly hotel. And on each side of the chamber, we're providing uh, a particular odor. If we take these two odors, after training uh, the flies so that one odor is associated with a negative outcome, the fly will prefer the other odor. Normally, flies can, can do this task very well, even if the odors are very similar. And we found that the reason they can do this is because there's sparse coding in a population of neurons in the brain called Kenyan cells. Now it turns out that there's a negative feedback loop that maintains sparse coding in Kenyan cells. So if you block this negative feedback loop, too many Kenyan cells respond to each odor. So that means there's too much overlap between the representations of different odors. And that means the flies have trouble telling the difference between the odors, which means that they can no longer form a specific association for one odor over, over another. What's really nice is that this sparse coding hypothesis for memory was actually posited several decades ago by mathematicians. And what we're seeing in this paper is experimental evidence that they were right.